In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my recent interview experience with Meta, AKA Facebook or WhatsApp or Instagram or a bunch of other stuff. So I applied in October, 2023, and it went all the way until January, 2024. So if you are interviewing with Meta, just know that it's gonna take a while. And I did it during the holidays, so it probably did take longer than it normally would. Stay tuned to the very end and I'll let you guys know if I got the job or not. So stay tuned for that. So the first step, of course, is getting the interview. Of course, you can apply online and hope that they see your resume out of the thousands of applications they get. Or as I always say, the best way is through a referral. So I got a referral through Blind and I even made a video on how I get referrals through Blind. So you guys should definitely check that out. Meta currently is interviewing like crazy, so I was able to get a response from a recruiter within a few days. So the first step was the recruiter call. I was currently in Korea at the time, so I had to take the call at 2 a.m. at my hotel, but it wasn't too bad because it's not a technical interview, so I just had to be coherent for like 20 to 30 minutes. So he basically just explained the interview process, which I kind of already know what it's like. He said there's a phone interview followed by four on-site interviews. And if you pass the on-site, there's a team matching phase. And then after that, you get the offer. Every coding interview at Meta has two problems, usually around the medium lead code difficulty, and you have 45 minutes to solve them. So it's all about speed with Meta, which I kind of prefer two medium problems over one really hard problem. However, with the medium problem, since you only have like 50 15 to 20 minutes. If you go down a wrong path or you get stuck, you're kind of screwed. So one cool thing they offered is that I could do a mock interview with a meta engineer. So I was still in Korea, so I had to take the interview at like 7 a.m., but it wasn't too bad. So the two questions they asked were lead code number 112 and lead code number 79. These were both very similar. They were both recursive depth first search problems. I kind of wish they changed it up a little bit, but they're problems that I'd seen so many times that I was able to pretty easily solve it and I got good feedback. So I was like, man, if all the questions are this easy, I'm gonna be fine. They weren't. I will say that Meta has the most organized interview process out of any company I've interviewed for. They even have their own portal where you can see exactly where you are in the interview process. You can email your interviewers or anyone you've had contact with. And there are a lot of learning resources on there. So I always felt like I was in the loop, unlike somewhere like Google, which has a horrendous interview process with the recruiter just ghosting you out of nowhere or misleading you. So I do appreciate that about Meta. All right, so my technical phone interview was scheduled for the end of November. For prep, I was doing lead code all day, every day. I did like 100 to 150 problems, and now I'm basically sick of doing lead code. I haven't got a 100 day badge, which I didn't know was a thing, but now if I ever comment, there's a little badge next to my name. So kind of a big deal. So I studied the top 100 Facebook tagged lead code problems. There are also two YouTube channels that I followed to verify that I had the optimal solutions. The first one is the Code, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. And another one is Cracking Fang. This channel isn't as big, but the guy that runs it works at Meta. So I feel like I got a really good idea of what an interviewer there was expecting. So both problems that I got in the phone interview, I had seen and solved before. The first question was a problem that I had gotten at an Amazon phone interview. And at the time it was the first time I'd ever seen it and I failed. This time I was more prepared, so I was able to solve it and run through some test cases. But the second question was a problem that I had recently solved on lead code. However, there was one follow-up question that he asked that I wasn't able to give a great answer for. So I left that interview feeling pretty good, but there was still a chance that I would get rejected. For phone interviews, they give you a response within 48 hours. I think mine was like exactly 48 hours after I got an email saying I had advanced to the next round. So I had the onsite interview about a month later at the beginning of January because they don't interview the last three weeks of December, which was fine because it gave me time to prepare. So the onsite interview is four interviews. It's two coding interviews with two questions each, one behavioral interview and one system design interview. For the system design interview, they actually give you an option of choosing between system design or product design. So this is, a, this is a, a big decision here. So I did some research and found that the system design is more about scalability and product design is more focusing on APIs and database schema. So I'm a little bit stronger in API design versus scalability. So I went with the product design interview. You also have the option of doing all the interviews in one day or splitting it up into two days. I chose to split it up into two days just because I've done four interviews in a day and by like the third or fourth interview, your brain is fried at that point. My prep for the coding interview was the same, just doing more lead code problems because that's what they ask. For the system design interview, I used grokking the API design interview. 
I also watched a few system design mock interviews on interviewing.io's YouTube channel, as well as the I got an offer engineering channel. So the first interview was the coding interview. The first question was a very common Facebook tagged question, and I knew exactly how to solve it optimally. There is a little trick that you have to use where you can solve it without using any memory. And I explained it to the interviewer, but he wanted me to explain why that trick actually worked, which I had not thought about. And I was not able to really give a great answer for that. So that kind of tripped me up a little bit, but I was able to code it in a few minutes and he was pretty happy with it. The second question was also a question I had seen previously. However, the night before my interview, I looked up this specific question and saw that I wasn't solving it in the most optimal way. So I kind of looked up how to solve it optimally, but I was like, eh, what are the chances I'm going to get this question? Well, I got that question. I went to solve it. I got stuck and then I just kind of froze up. And like I said, if you freeze up in these interviews, you only have a couple minutes to get it back. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to come up with the solution. So I was feeling pretty down after this interview because I'm like, I was like, I have three more interviews. Did I already get rejected? But I had another interview 15 minutes later. So I had to kind of put it aside and get myself focused again. Second interview was system design. It was to design a very common system. I signed an NDA, so I can't give away any of the questions, but it was a question that is covered on grokking the API design interview. However, I kind of forgot how they solved it in, in that course. So I felt like with this interview, I did I did enough to pass, but I wasn't super impressive. So I finished those interviews not feeling great. And I was like, well, you know what? I still have one more day. If I'm perfect on the next two interviews, maybe I have a chance. For day two, the first interview was the behavioral interview. I prepared for this by watching a YouTube channel. I forget the name. Let me look this up because I want to give him credit. So Dan Kreuter, he does a lot of behavioral interview videos, so you should check them out. I hate preparing for behavioral interviews, so I did this for like two days. The good thing about Meta and behavioral interviews is their questions are very straightforward and things that you can look up. Things like name a time you had a conflict with your manager or name a time where you had to lead a project where the requirements weren't clear. For this interview, it's all about your preparation. Have several examples that you can use and there are certain examples that can be used to solve different types of questions. I felt like this interview went really well. I felt like I connected with the interviewer. It felt like more like a conversation than an interview. So I felt really good about that interview. And then the final coding interview came and I knew I had to be perfect on this one. The first question he asked me, he said, hey, let's do a warm up problem, which usually means it's like a very trivial problem, but it was a leak code medium problem, which I don't really know if that that's a warm up problem. It is a common lead code problem, but not one that's Facebook tagged. It was one that I had seen like years ago. So I did kind of struggle with it. I eventually did come up with the solution, but I think I took too long and the interviewer wasn't happy about that. Maybe I took 20 minutes instead of 15 minutes to solve it. So that was already not a good start. And then question two was a problem that I had never seen before and a concept that I hadn't thought about since I was in grad school seven years ago. It was one of those questions where if you had seen it before, it's pretty easy to solve. But if you haven't seen it, it's pretty hard to figure out, especially in 15 minutes. So I struggled with this one, not gonna lie. The interviewer didn't really help me that much. And then at the end of the interview, he's like, yeah, I don't really have time to answer any questions. I pretty much kind of knew what the result was gonna be. They do get back to you after one week. So I did get an email from my recruiter a week later saying they have my results and they wanted to set up a call. And I was like, oh, maybe it's since it's a call, it might be good news. Cause they usually, cause companies usually give you a rejection email if you didn't get it. But I looked up and Facebook, they do call you whether you're, you're, you pass or you're rejected. So got on the call and immediately she was like, yeah, we're not going to move forward to the next steps. Overall, it was disappointing more just because of the time that I spent. And I really felt like, you know, like even that last problem, I looked up how to do it. And I was like, this isn't like that crazy of a thing to solve. Like it, it was pretty easy to solve once you know how. So I, I didn't feel like I was technically incapable. I just feel like, I don't know, I didn't perform well, but you know, this was the most I've ever prepared for an interview and I tried my best. So at the end of the day, I couldn't be too upset. If you fail an on-site interview with Meta, you have to wait one year from your phone interview to interview again. And it's already been like four months since my phone interview. So it'll be here before I know it. So yeah, that was four months of interviewing. It was definitely a roller coaster of an interview process. But like I said, it was very smooth. They always kept me in the loop with what was going on. So I did feel like I had what I needed to succeed, but just didn't go my way this time. Uh, if you do have an interview with Meta coming up, good luck. Hopefully this video helps. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like the video. I mean, if you've watched it to this point, you probably liked it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and keep on coding.